Yeah. 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 Um, you know, I, again, I'm not a doctor. I don't work in an ER, but I have been, obviously me and everyone else have been tracking what's going on here. And it's interesting that they've found, um, for, for one, just a few weeks ago, they're like, we used to bring in people, put them on their backs and have them breathe like this and sometimes intubate them. Mm. Um, people with severe problems tied, tied to COVID. They found out that's a really bad idea because when we breathe in, our lungs expand somewhat in our chest, but most of that expansion is in our back. So if you're lying flat on your back, you're really inhibiting your ability to breathe properly. So now they're putting these people on their stomachs and sides and they're thinking, wow, why hadn't we done this before? Well, we had, if you look at, look at any picture of the Buddha sleeping, he's on his side. And Chinese doctors 2000 years ago were like, you gotta sleep on your side. And, uh, you know, so it's just interesting. Uh, 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 Constantine Buteyko always said, you have to sleep on your side, especially if you have respiratory problems. So now we've caught up with that. So if you have mild symptoms of this, sleep on your stomach, sleep on your side for sure. And this isn't, you know, medical uh, advice. This is just seems like pretty well known at this time. Also, uh, the nose, we've gone through that before, but Louis Ignaro, who won a Nobel Prize for his work in nitric oxide, believes that the nose can possibly play an important role in helping us defend ourselves against COVID and then allowing ourselves to um, recover uh, more easily. I'm not saying you breathe through your nose, you're not going to get this, you're not going to have any problems. No, I'm saying it's only going to help you out. And that is mostly tied to nitric oxide because yes. nitric oxide, when they, they put viruses, they put SARS in, in a Petri dish and added nitric oxide to it against controls and, and the virus was, was blunted by just the presence of nitric oxide. And it's no coincidence now that they're starting to treat patients with COVID with, guess what? Nitric oxide. Yeah. <laughs> we create our own nitric oxide in our noses. And by humming, you can increase nitric oxide 15-fold by humming. Wow. So I was just reading this one study about a, a guy who had chronic sinusitis and thought, Wonder if which is a fungal infection in the nose. He's like, wonder mm -hmm. if I could if I could hum for a certain amount of time and and cure myself of this. He's only one person. This is just it's just mm. an interesting story. I'm not saying this is science, but but he said that he was absolutely able to overcome chronic sinusitis by by forcing himself to hum ten minutes mm. four times a day. Yes, so it's going to annoy everyone around you, um, but it is not going to hurt you, and that's the number one thing. Hum for five, 10 minutes, do it a few times a day, you will increase your nitric oxide. At this time, COVID has really put an awareness on breathing because it's a respiratory disease and, you know, or at least it's, it's transmitted, you know, partly res respiratory. Um, it affects the lungs. It affects your blood oxygen saturation. It gives you symptoms for, very much in terms of respiratory shortness of breath, air hunger, et cetera. And here's the strange thing. The World Health Organization are talking about washing hands. They're not talking about nasal breathing, both for the individual who doesn't want to get infected. Like I was in tubes in London, right, traveling right up until March the 17th is when I flew back from Los Angeles back to Ireland. And that was locked down on the 18th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember being in tubes and I was just thinking here, this was rush hour in London, five o'clock in the evening. They were absolutely crowded. And I did two things there. I says, there could be people infected in this carriage and I'm going to do two things because I want to reduce the viral load that's coming into my body. I kept my mouth shut and I breathed hardly any air for the entire duration of the journey. I had air hunger all the way through. Keeps you very calm and air hunger, by the way, is, as you know, Mike, but just for your listeners, it signifies that carbon dioxide has increased in the blood and this is helping to open up blood vessels. It increases oxygen delivery from the, from the hemoglobin to the tissues. So in terms of COVID, why have the World Health Organization, why have they not talked about nasal breathing to help to reduce the risk of infection and also for those people who are infected? Because as I said, your nose recovers the moisture from the exhale breath. There's a 42% greater water loss breathing out through your mouth. If you're breathing hard and fast with your mouth open, you are emitting a greater volume of water particles into the atmosphere, like an aerosol, and this is how it's being transmitted. 
You know, there's a Zumba class in Korea, and you'll see it online. This, in fact, this is, um, Zumba dance instructor went in. She gave, she gave a class, and every, she was infected, the dance instructor. And, of course, she's moving, she's breathing hard, she's mouth breathing, and she literally infected. Everybody in the class got infected as a result of it. Now, gyms really have to change their stance in terms of mouth breathing. Yes. In a gym, you have to breathe through your nose. You have to breathe. And there's a way to breathe. And it, it just, like, it doesn't make sense anyway for people to do exercise with their mouth open. 